Tees at 84th and Havel. This week's special through April 9th is buy one, get one free on 8-ounce flat iron steaks, limit four per visit. Also, $1.50 off all Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauces. And don't forget about lunch on Fired Up Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations at 84th and Havelock and 30th and Yankee Hill in Lincoln or 168th and Maple in Omaha. Get to the Mercado today for the best meat in town. Looking for a job that feels like family? Join Lincoln Industries, where tradition meets innovation. They're a family-owned, privately held manufacturing company with a passion for excellence and a commitment to their community. They have openings on all shifts at both the main plant and air park facilities, offering flexibility to fit your schedule. Whether you're a seasoned professional or just starting out, there's a place for you there. At Lincoln Industries, they invest in their people's success, providing opportunities for growth and advancement. Apply now and become a part of something special at Lincoln Industries. You don't think about your roof very often, but you should never take it for granted. Roofing Service Company takes every measure to provide you with the highest quality roofing solution. Whether it's a new roof installation, roof repair, or a re-roofing project, their overall goal is to provide you with a pleasant experience and a long-lasting roof. If you have a need for siding or gutters, they're your place too. Visit RoofingServiceCompany.com for more info today. Working at Continental in Lincoln isn't a job, it's a career. And right now, they've raised wages again, and they're hiring for production operators at $24.62 per hour, which grows to $28.97 per hour within three years. Skilled trade positions now start at $33.36 per hour, with opportunities to make more based on certifications. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits, plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates, with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or apply, go to ContinentalJobs.com with keyword Lincoln. Come work at Continental today. Spring sports are here and it's time to upgrade your equipment. But don't go rush into your big box store. Play It Again Sports is your place to go for all spring sports equipment for baseball, softball, golf, and disc golf. Play It Again Sports has quality, slightly to gently used equipment, and 50% of their inventory is actually new equipment. And don't forget, buying from them is a great way to get new products with great discounts by also bringing in your used items for store credit or cash on the spot. Play It Again Sports at 48. And Vine. Whether you're looking for a place to stay for a concert at PBA, a Nebraska home game, or just a night on the town, the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket is the place for you. Enjoy an evening at one of many restaurants or bars within a short walking distance. Business travelers at the hotel will enjoy free high-speed internet access, a 24-hour business center, and large in-room workstations. And check out the Bistro, where you'll enjoy healthier food and beverage options, as well as high-tech conveniences. Book your room today at the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket. Spring is a time of new beginnings and trying new things. If you haven't tried Fear's Cheese Spread yet, the time is now. For parties for St. Patrick's Day and Easter or celebrating the NCAA tournament with friends, there's no better dip to bring everyone together and celebrate something from Nebraska. Get to your local grocery store today and load up on Fuhrer's Cheese Spread. No event or party is complete without it on your table. Start your Sundays off right with Jeff and Nicole Essink on Fitness Fanatics. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, how to achieve fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners and gym goers. It's Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sundays on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Why wait until Friday to start your weekend? Go ahead, start right now. You're thirsty now, and 93.7 The Ticket is here to help you stock up. Just in time for the weekend when I like to hit the clubs. Time to broaden your horizons and try some new wine and beer. It's Thirsty Thursday with Kevin Meyer from Meyer's Cork and Bottle. We're back. Yeah. Daddy. Didn't even hear the intro. <laughs> <laughs> this because Jay was talking too much. Yeah. Yeah. That's Jay was all right. in here running his mouth. Jay was yeah. in here talking too much. Nick, did you hear uh, what happened with Strick and Jay yesterday? I did not. I'm also tangentially involved. I didn't do anything. <laughs> um, so Jay was sitting in there and we're talking little hoops, and all of a sudden uh went from Jay Foreman to A Foreman. Oh. Got no Jay, no jumper. <laughs> Dang, that's Ooh, tough. That was that's awesome. cool. He was, uh, he that's trying cool. To pass, he was less than he's thrilled. He's trying to pass the dusty to that, the left-hand side. That, that sounds like something Jay, or Stricky would say. Doesn't it? 
Wow. Stricky's that's, clever. He comes up with that stuff real fast. Wow, that's cold blood. Real fast. Well, Austin is literally trying to pass the duchy to the left hand side. It was a team effort, Stricky. Right. Two man It game. was. It was a yeah, two man game. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was like Stockton Malone. Yeah. Just pick and roll. Yeah. That's what we're doing. Um, one man game, Kevin Meyer, with the, the two drink game, the beer and the wine. All well, we I know is it's red. Kev. That's all I know. It looks looks quite red over there. Lovely. Ooh, that's so, good. Hi, Stricky. Come on. Come on. Austin? Come on. Come on. Come on. Kick her down. Kick her down. Let's go. Oh, 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 so I'm stalking and you're Malone. <laughs> <laughs> See how it is. Um, the, uh, so we'll we'll start with the beer. And, uh, you know, basically, <laughs> in my efforts to remain topical, usually my, uh, <laughs> my themes are weather related. And uh, so this has to do with the spring that we're getting so far. And this beer is called Fugazi. Oh, Fugazi. it's a Fugazi? It's, it it's is. fake spring. <laughs> fake spring. I am, it's going to snow next week. It Whoa. Better not. Whoa. It better not. I buy that. Why do we need that? It's I, the I, wind. <laughs> it has to do with the wind. So we're done with the Ooh. third winter. Now we're just in wind season. We're not even in spring. So spring is a Fugazi. And uh, this beer is basically, it's an Italian style Pilsner. Mm. but it's got a lot of hoppies in it it's made in the good old us of a by a uh, brewery called black stack brewing and uh and it's called fugazi and it's, it's like the uh, matthew mcconaughey movie we tried to talk <laughs> about you know, it's a fugazi it's a uh, fairy dust it doesn't exist you know so that's what that's what our spring is uncle so kev it's yes, got sir. a lot of hoppies in it a little bit got little a little bit. pop pop hop it's got a little zip to the zang yeah, a little zip to the zang it is delicious is it, a, is, is it considered thumb? a patio pounder I would, but yeah, it's got that unique here? finish. Four it does. Got a little back end, kind of piney. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A little, you know what I mean? A little zang on the, yeah, on the, on back, the back end. end. Yeah, cool looking can too. Yeah, it is. Is kind of a cool can. Crazy. Is that supposed to be a little yellow diamond or something? It's, yeah, going exactly. On there? Fake, diamond. fake diamond. Yeah. Okay. Fake yeah, it's diamond. fugazi. I mean, it's fake. It's fake. Well, like very tricky, does. Nikki. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> Dang. <laughs> right. Dang, Kev. I'm sorry, Uncle Kev, that you came in and Strix acting like this. Hey, you know, it's one of those. I'm things. fugazi today. You, uh, <laughs> you know, you dish it out and you take it. Some days you dish more than you take. When well, Nick gives it to me, pause, pause. <laughs> tricky, Nick, tricky, Nick, take it. Nick clowns pause. on his, <laughs> Nicky, Nicky clowns on Stricky quite a bit, and it's really slick how he tr he clowns on Strick. No, oh yeah. Hey, hey. tell the truth, Austin. Does he does he fugazi me quite often? <laughs> it goes both ways. That's, yeah. that's yeah. not the sentence. Probably not the choice of words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We could probably do another. To, to be fair, Kevin, Coming you on. are the reason for Strix excitement. Like yeah. he walks in any other day and it's just yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah. Thirsty Thursday comes around and he's just bouncing around. You're bouncing off the wall. You know, you remind me of my sixty pound boxer at home. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I walk through the door, he's 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 at it. He's uh, he's so excited. He has to grab a toy. So that he can calm himself down so that he doesn't go too nuts. Did you bring your dog drinks? I don't bring him drinks, but he mm. gets plenty of treats. Oh, yeah. that's good. Even better. He's a good little fella. Little Jim Jim. <laughs> little fella? 60 doesn't seem little to me. For a boxer, that's not that big. Oh. But my yeah. other boxer who uh, sadly passed away, Beanie. Uh, R.I.P. Beanie. R.I.P. Beanie. Um, at, uh, at Christmas. He was 80 pounds. He was 80 plus. Ooh. Are they so, outdoor dogs? Uh, they're They're... Both. I mean, we gotcha. live out in the country, but yeah, yep. they sleep indoors. That, there you go. <laughs> yeah, no, they're that's they're, the way to do it. They're just climate big, controlled, big softies. Big. Softies. Have you only had it's boxers tricky. for dogs? Uh, I've had others, but boxers are my favorite. Why? What? What about them? Their personality. Mm. Um, they 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 almost act like people in dog suits. Mm. They they sit up like people, <laughs> and uh, I I have an affinity for short nosed dogs versus long nosed dogs. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah. And I like the jowls. Well, why don't you like mm. pugs? I like pugs just fine. Uh -huh. You know, I just like it. You know, Dude, he's got they, nothing against pugs, man. They, Calm down. They they <laughs> they snort a little too much. The yeah. boxers don't aren't really you know snorty, but uh, um, they and they big floppy ears. I like floppy oh. eared dogs, <laughs> and they have got short short uh, their short hair. So Ooh. it's it's a little bit easier to keep clean <laughs> than uh, than a long haired dog. So. Person, it, it's kind of a combination of things, but to me, just you know, they're funny. They've got a, they, they almost make you laugh. They've got a sense of humor. It's, 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 it's huh. difficult to explain. But can, we, can you bring your dog sometime? I don't know yeah. if you ever had a dog in studio. Really? So, not um, to my knowledge. DP he, is very pro dog. 
he uh you know i don't know if he would enjoy it or not he's uh we would enjoy him does it matter if you would enjoy it or not well no if he would enjoy it <laughs> that's what i'm saying we would enjoy him so enjoy it. <laughs> i don't know we could bring jim jim in the studio you go, sometime Austin. thanks nick wow but yeah he's a he's a good dude wow anyway so Jay? let's back to Get back to Thursday, <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is him. You he, he, he learned from Slick you. Nick. He learned from you. His he new name is Slick you. Nick. Slick Nick changing the subject. <laughs> so again, we're talking about spring, and this wine is called Le Mistral, Ooh. which is basically <laughs> the uh, the Mistral is the wind that blows through the Rhone Valley in the southeastern part of France. Ooh. And uh, right now we're in a Mistral blowing through the city of Lincoln. And um, so we're going to drink to it. We're going to cheers to it. We're going to embrace it and um, and then hopefully wish it away and, you know, take those winds down to Kansas where they belong. But uh, mm. uh, it's interesting. So this vineyard itself was originally owned by Joseph Phelps, who was one of Napa Valley's preeminent winemakers, um, perhaps one of the best in the world. And, uh, but this is his, was his estate on the Monterey Peninsula. And, um, he felt that the climate was very similar to that in the uh, southeastern part of France and the Rhone Valley. And, and in that region, they can blend up to 13 different grape types to make the wine from. And they'll even blend in small percentages of white wine into the red. So, um, the big three are what they call the GSM blend, uh, which stands for Grenache, uh, Syrah, and Mouvedre. The Grenache is kind of medium has a little more bright cherry type flavors. The Syrah adds some peppery components and the Mouvedre is a very thick skinned grape. So it adds some color, some oomph, some beefiness to the wine. And so when you blend those together, you get a wine that not only is really tasty, but it's super versatile. So it goes well with everything. So anytime someone throws me a curveball, like, yeah. you know, my dad and uncle shot a wild boar in Texas and we're going to roast that <laughs> thing. You know, what kind of wine goes that with that? Well, there's no textbook to tell you that. So I'll usually recommend a wine like this because it goes well with everything. It is delicious. It is good. Tricky. You're the Reds guy. Walk us through it. it it's, it's, it's heavy. It's thick. It's bold. That's what I feel. It's a bold statement. That, yeah. that blend really comes through because when I, I saw this, I thought it was going to be a lot more dry. Mm -hmm. Than it ended up being. I, I love how, like, thick, how what Strick is saying, how thick it is, and you get that flavor, right? You actually get the flavor yeah. of the grape more so than the dryness yes. on the back. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and yeah. I'm not a big dry. Like, I don't, I don't, I like sweeter, mm -hmm. and this is still very good. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's smooth, and and yes. uh, when you say thickness in the wine world, they would call that viscosity. 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 Yeah, it's it's fugazi viscosity. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, what, kind of legs so it if it's thick, is it high viscosity or low viscosity? Higher viscosity, the, oh, the more yeah. dense it is. Okay. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. All it right, takes Tricky. So, walk, walk us through. It's what, got some what legs Tricky do on the glass a little yep. bit. Walk us through. What does Tricky just do? So, Tricky is swirling his wine, and yep. then he's watching how it streaks uh, down the slow inside streak. of the glass. So, slow, individualized streaks. Really? Viscosity. Oh, like Are, that? Gotcha. Yeah, yep. That's an indicator of the wine's viscosity. Thick interesting and uh and so it sort of sticks to the inside of the glass it runs down uh, slowly and um and you know that's basically just the wine's richness mm -hmm. um and you know to me when you get those blends so you it adds that dimension of flavor so you get i get some sort of like red cherry and then i get some more riper cherry and then i get some plum and then a little bit of like almost like um it's this sounds weird, but almost like a tobacco type of a thing, like a sweet earthiness thing going on. Um, and it's just a really complex wine that, uh, uh, you know, these aren't cheap. They're 30 bucks on the shelf, but I think it drinks like a $60 yeah. wine. And like mm -hmm. I said, goes well with everything. It's called Le Mistral, which mm -hmm. is the wind uh, that flows or blows through uh, the Rhone Valley in the southeastern part of France. Hypothetically, yeah. would this be a part of your spring wine sale? Well, it is because they all are. So hello, nice intro, Austin. <laughs> last uh, last three or four days, it ends Sunday. We have a buy five get one free right now. So mix and match any five regularly priced wines in the store, get a six one of equal or lesser value at no charge. Hello, and uh, so it's a good time to stock up for the spring, especially if uh, Easter put a dent in your wine rack. Uh, you can uh, reload and be ready to go for summer. Any, I, might, any, I might need to do that. Any favorites that are running out or any ones that are maybe under the radar that you recommend people pick up here at the end of the sale? Well, I brought this in not in only 
my efforts to remain topical, but brought it in because I think this is kind of a best kept secret wine. Mm. Um, there are, so the most famous wine in the Southeastern part of France in the Rhone is called Chateauneuf de Pop. Literally means new palace of the Pope. And they created the city to attract the Pope out of the Vatican, to get him to spend more time in France and get mm. him out of Italy. Mm. And, uh, and it worked. And we're talking several hundred years ago, right? Five, 600 years ago. And what was interesting is um, they made some weird laws. Uh, so their version of a UFO was a flying cigar. <laughs> and, uh, and so they, and, and they had a term for it. They called it the Les Cigre Volant, which is the violent cigar. They thought it was, you know, they would attack the region. So they outlawed flying cigars. Like they could do anything about that anyway, right? <laughs> and then the other thing that they did is that the only things that could be grown in the region commercially were grapes and herbs. And uh, and so what happens is those herbs will die back and regenerate in the soil, and those vines pick that up. And so it has that sagey, herbaceous quality as well. <laughs> so you get the fruit, but then you get this herbal component. And uh, it's just kind of a, a, a unique complexion of of wine and uh and this monterey peninsula has a very similar climate and that it's windy and it's they have these um very rocky former uh, uh creek beds or stream beds um that uh, are really <laughs> suitable for the uh the the growing of the wine grapes because what happens in the in the uh growth season they warm up during the day and so it heats up those rocks, but then it gets pretty darn cool at night. And so it kind of creates a little shield for the uh, little heat, little mini heaters for the uh, for the nice. vineyards. So um, and they have that same thing. So this is basically an homage to that. And I think equally as good. Incredible. It was delicious. Mm -hmm. Two for two. Job well done. Fugazi. Thank you, fellas. Fugazi. The real deal. Not the fake deal. That's what it's not that fairy dust. It's not the fairy not dust. The fairy but, dust. Well, it's it's an Italian style Pilsner done here in the U.S. So it's a Fugazi. But it's good. Delicious. 4.8% too. Yeah. Mm. In a 16 ounce can. And yeah. It's, and kind of looks cool. And then the Le Mistral. Uh, the, the Joseph's win. Blend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There it is. The Myers Cork and Bottle. 13th and South. Go get yours today. Spring Just a wine. few days left on that spring wine sale. Get down there. Tell Kevin hi. We sent you. Let him know. Kevin, thanks for coming in as always. Appreciate you, fellas. Back with more Old School next. You're listening to Old School with DP and J. Download the mobile app and listen wherever you are on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Spring sports are here and it's time to upgrade your equipment. But don't go rush into your big box store. Played Against Sports is your place to go for all spring sports equipment for baseball, softball, golf, and disc golf. Played Against Sports has quality, slightly to gently used equipment, and 50% of their inventory is actually new equipment. And don't forget, buying from them is a great way to get new products with great discounts by also bringing in your used items for store credit or cash on the spot. Played Against Sports at 48th and Vine. The electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox KFXL Weather. Sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. The Lincoln forecast for today will see lots of sunshine to go along with light winds and an afternoon high around 60. Tonight, clear skies and calm winds with a low around 30. And tomorrow, we'll see mainly sunny skies and more mild weather. See an afternoon high around 64. I'm meteorologist Kyle Tucker for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Landmark Implement is your local authorized John Deere dealer. Landmark's trained and certified sales staff will help you find the right equipment for your needs at a price that's right for you, all backed by Landmark's extensive parts and service network. Whether it's a tractor, planter, combine, an easy track lawnmower, or gator, every piece of equipment in pre-owned inventory is put through a rigorous inspection so it's ready to work hard for you. Landmark's team works together to make sure everything is sold meets their quality standards. Learn more at LandmarkImp.com or stop into a local Landmark location and experience the Landmark difference. Rain, snow, or shine, John Henry's is here to keep your home's plumbing systems working properly no matter what kind of weather Nebraska throws at us. From unclogging toilets and drains to installing new water heaters and water treatment systems, John Henry's is your plumbing expert in the Lincoln and Omaha communities. Visit us at calljh.com or call John Henry's. 
455, 55, 55. John Henry's plumbing, heating and air, and electrical. This is Coach Bill Bush. You all know my passion for Nebraska. Having coached all over the country, I can honestly say there is no place like Nebraska. You know where there's also no place like? Midwest Bank. Midwest Bank has proudly served Nebraska for over 70 years, and they're located in nine different communities. Midwest Bank is ready, willing, and able to meet all your personal, business, and agriculture needs. Your community, your bank, and mine, Midwest Bank. Find out more at Midwest Bank. Member F. D-I-C. Attention all Wings fans. 89 Cent Wings are back on Tuesdays at Buffalo Wings and Rings in Lincoln. Enjoy the best wings in town for boneless or traditional at a price that makes the whole family happy. And now at the Williamsburg Village Wings and Rings, you can enjoy $1.50 Tall Boys in Bud Light, Coors Light, Bush Light, and Michelob Ultra every day after 7 p.m. and all day on Sundays. Get to Wings and Rings today and make sure to stop by on Tuesdays for 89 Cent Wings. Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top shelf liquor to crowd favorite beer, Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. Ooh, what a day. I could sure use an afternoon pick me up. Hold up, the new 93.7 The Ticket location has a milk, coffee, and tea inside? Oh yeah, this is a game changer. Need an afternoon pick-me-up? How about a coffee or smoothie on your way to work? Stop by the Ticket Mill location on 1040 O Street to get your go-to drink or try out our new game day drinks exclusive to the Ticket Mill location. We know it'll make your day a mill yen times better. Finally, a good reason to have a smart house. Just say, Alexa. Play 93.7 The Ticket, and we'll magically start playing. How's it work? Nobody knows. Don't ask questions. Houses? They're expensive. And once you buy one, you're kind of stuck with it for a while. You need to make sure you get your best house for the best price. You need Ben Bleicher and his team of pros at Professional Realty Group. They'll take the time to figure out what's important for you in your dream home, and they have the expertise to find the hidden issues that could surprise you after the sale. That's professional knowledge, proactive service. We call that potential. Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Service Ambassador. Find more online at prg-ne.com. Garage doors can be expensive. Are you keeping yours in the best condition possible? This is Cameron Hall with Doors Plus. Doors Plus is a locally owned business that prides itself on the fast, reliable, and friendly service. Doors Plus offers flexible scheduling so you can book an appointment that fits your busy day. My team and I will come out to your property, both commercial and residential, and provide you with the necessary information you need to make sure your garage door is in working and smooth condition. Give Doors Plus a call today at 402 590 5800 to book an appointment and learn more about our preventative maintenance plans. Doors Plus, Garage Doors, and more. Back to old school with DP and J on 937 The Ticket and the Ticketfm.com. Happy Thursday, Jay Foreman, Austin Norman, old school. We are live at 1040 O Street. Beautiful day outside. Big shout out to Kevin Meyer, Meyer Cork and Bottle coming in for Thirsty Thursday. Always, uh, Good libations, good vibe, and also we love Kevin. So we go out there and check him out. He has great deals, great uh, options, and also they are very uh, helpful when you have a special occasion as well. And uh, so uh, always enjoy Kevin coming in, even though I didn't get to participate in Thirsty Thursday. Big shout out to Strick on the crossover as well. Um, always doing big things. But now we are into uh, spring football. I know you guys touched on it a little bit. You know, we're heavy into football today just because of the potential, not even potential, of just the, the first little. I, I, you know, we're going to cover obviously what what Dylan Wright Riola said, uh, play some of the audio hopefully, and then obviously give my uh, opinion. But then also, uh, <laughs> as we said, I watched my man. Listen, <laughs> I, I have to pause. We have to, I guess, pause for strict. I've never seen somebody with the with bigger cojones than that older gentleman right there. Listen, he had. Z- Austin, the fear factor or percentage in his heart is negative 100. My man, he said, listen, 
it's it, I, it's my right away. You're an 18 wheeler. I'm going right in front of you. You're an 18 wheeler. I'm a two footer. It, Bring it, it. And the best part about it, there's no way that the driver of that truck could see him. He <laughs> might five five. Maybe, maybe, maybe on a good day. Yeah, and just woke up. But the best part is he looked the truck up and down like, how dare you not run me over in the middle of the street? Uh, but anyways, back to it. Um, they had the first little, I guess, uh, teaser of what potential college football could be. I've mentioned it many a times. You can call me. Um, what is it when you can predict the future? What is Clairvoyant? It? No, we used to call uh Coach Osborne is that dude, you could just, you know, he was telling us, hey, Arizona State's going to be tough. We were like, yeah, right. We went down there and got our head busted open to the white mean 19 nothing. Um, anyways, um, but I said, you know, I think when they make these kind of announcements, now I'm sure that everybody can kind of say, you know, what, you know, football, everybody's excited, spring football and stuff like that. I think they try to do, I think they throw it out there to see what the initial reaction is. Mm. They're not just going to come out with it and say, everybody deal with it. They want to know, what the initial shock value is, what's the positive, what the what the negatives are, and if it's something that when they do really roll it out, they're kind of prepared for all the different uh, opinions. And then, uh, but I think it's coming sooner than later. I, I said it when when they went from four to twelve, and then within three weeks they're already put talking about sixteen team playoff. <laughs> this is about the money. This is about fo- college football. This is not about every other sport. And I hate to say it, that's just the way it is. And it's going to be something different. Football is going to break off, and then you're going to see it's going to be the haves and have-nots. But I think the good thing about it is it's actually going to make people compete. So it's always a, a ever-evolving thing. The networks are behind it. The big money brokers behind it as well. Are the networks behind it? I, I'm well, not I sure. Well, I think initially because... they, they are just because of when they're giving out billion dollar contracts to the conferences, they do have some influence. Now, I don't think that they are totally behind it. I think there's in partnership with people that are understanding, look, we or our sport stirs the pot. It's on your network. Let's work together. How about this great idea? So are are, are you of the mind that if this, you know, super league such as this comes to pass, it will be because the TV networks told the schools get in line, you don't get your money? Because I think a lot of the, the athletic directors right now are hesitant because they don't want to go back to the table with the networks. Are the yeah. networks going to do the negotiating for the schools? Is that kind of your your standpoint? I, uh, I just think they understand. I think as they've been approached about college, the first college football playoffs, I think the powers that be, whether it's your big donors that are on the plane with the the you know the presidents of the university and the athletic directors and whoever are in this kind of decision making and then also the college football i think they learned a lot about the money Mm. and the potential of the money along with the excitement of college football or football in general that's why you see football almost on every every day of the week there's a reason why you have you know mac tuesdays and wednesday there's a reason for it so everybody has a place so i think it was a collaborative effort but also i think they understand where they're at compared to other sports in college Mm. That and they hold the power. That they hold the power. So it now it becomes an ego and an opportun- uh, you know, opportunistic. They're going to take it over and decide to take their product and put it at a separate level because they feel like it's at a separate level right now. And maybe whether it's revenue sharing or just where the, they are in the pecking order, they feel like they're not where they need to be and where they think they deserve to be. Now, there's some teams that could be on the outside looking in. That's why everything, that's why the pressure, that's why the um the expectations and the actions have to be we got to we got to be this is not just this is everybody like you there is no grace period <laughs> there is no year off there is no day off and every day every second of the day every meeting every practice every mental rep every you know uh training session or whatever every time you're at school is fourth and one and that's why I think I'll put my commissioner hat on and see what people think in the text line about my league. Um, but first and foremost, I think uh, well, we, we'll go to about another two or three minutes. Um, you know, I think it was good today that all, all three quarterbacks talk. Mm-hmm. Um, look, you know, look, you, you know, the young guys that got to come in and earn it. And um, Heinrich Harburg has to be able to separate the new car, new toy situation versus what he has to do. Now he now when you think about it, 
in his mind, this, if I'm him, if, if, and this is it, actually, I'm going to do his mindset, go to break, come back and do the freshman mindset. Top of the hour, we'll do in this, we'll do more into Dylan Raiola, what he, what he said, see if I'm along his mindset, and then we'll finish off with the college football playoffs. But my mindset, if I'm Heinrich Harburg, regardless of who's coming in, I have the leg up. I've played college football before. I do have some some physical skills. I'm 6'4", I'm 200... 20, 30 pounds. 225, 20 to 30 pounds. I can run. Um, you know, when I did the fundamental things... Big arm. I, I got, I've shown the ability to throw. Where I stand and where I could go falls on me. Now I have a quarterback coach. So now I would say, okay, now I have somebody that specifically is here to coach me, train me, and develop me, along with everybody else, but I'm just taking my mindset. Now I have to put all my work into overdrive. Mm -hmm. Now everything that I do, this is if I want it, right? Um, everything that I do has to be focused on me being three times the player I was last year. And it's not going to happen overnight. That's what his mindset has got to be. Every day is Nebraska, Iowa. Every day is, oh, every rep is a win and loss. Have I gotten better? You know, this is what I'm working on. And you have to be willing to fail at times to get better at what you need to get back, bad, better at because of long-term um, success. I really like listening to Heinrich Harburg speak today. I thought he had a really good perspective. And he mentioned some of those issues that he didn't call them issues. He took a little umbrage with, with that phrasing. But what did he need to correct? He was very honest about it. He said sometimes his footwork got sloppy. Um, sometimes he dropped his elbow and had those passes batted down. He mentioned Michigan specifically, you know, thrown from down here, having those passes batted down. He knows what he has to work on. He knows the, the focus of his off season. He appreciated Glenn Thomas for being honest with him, being in you know the room with him to work with him. And he said the best way for him to learn that stuff is yes, get live reps. But also he admitted that sometimes in the heat of the battle, he went back to what was comfortable. Yeah. You know, coaches were telling him the right thing to do but the game would, would be a little fast where he felt he had to get the ball in a out hurry, in a hurry. Right. So he went back to, to dropping the elbow to bad footwork. So his focus this off season, he said was how do I rep the fundamentals so often that they become yeah. what I'm comfortable with? That's the hardest thing for a young player to do. I think he's in a great position that you have a quarterback coach that came in and that's honest with him, but then also get, gives him the opportunity to apply those type of, um, uh, the, to apply the, you know, some of the things that he needs to work on into a safe working environment, but then also in practice, then it comes on the player to consciously continue to do it. And you, that's why you have to be in overdrive. Mm -hmm. So you're going to, you, you know, you might not be able to throw all day, but you can footwork, you can elbow, you get your elbow up and do all that stuff millions of times without stressing your arm. One well, of the best Nick Saban uh, videos I ever see, because I watch him all the time when, it, you know, try to pick up some coaching tips. <laughs> He said, well, he told what dude, he said, what you do your whole childhood, play Nintendo? He said, get your elbow up and throw the ball. Now, it was, you know, different language. What was I saying? Get your elbow up and throw the ball, deliver it. And then, um, so it's just a little things. And so, you know, look, it's going to, whoever does the, has the best fundamentals come, you know, at, you know, when this competition is initially decided, it's going to have the leg up because in order to play the quarterback position, doesn't matter if you're, Anything, all the quarterbacks in there, you have to be fundamentally sound. Fundamentals is how you win games. And, uh, you know, if you don't have fundamentals, that's how you lose. So, anyways, good good uh, first quick segment there. We're going to take a quick break. Give us the freshman uh, mindset. Then we'll go to the top of the 5 o'clock hour. Listen to Dylan uh, Riola talk for, I think, the first time, you know, this spring. So, it's, it's good to see him up in front of the camera and see how he uh, handles himself. And we'll talk a little bit about that. Then we're going to be into Commissioner Jay Foreman's mind. Uh, for this new college football potential playoff system in Super League. We'll be right back. Jay Foreman, Austin Norman, Old School. We'll holla at you. Watch Old School live on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. Old School with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Load up on meat and more this spring at the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese at 84th and Havlon. This week's special through April 9th is buy one, get one free on 8-ounce flat iron steaks, limit four per visit. Also, $1.50 off all Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauces. And don't forget about lunch on Fired Up Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations at 84th and Havelock and 30th and Yankee Hill in Lincoln 
or 168th and Maple in Omaha. Get to the Mercado today for the best meat in town. Wall-to-wall -to -wall wine and spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top shelf liquor to crowd favorite beer, Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall to Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at empire-fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. The playoff race is heating up and the Lincoln Stars are pushing for their third consecutive postseason berth this spring. Join us at the Icebox as the Stars host the Sioux City Musketeers at 7.05 p.m. on Friday and the Omaha Lancers at 6.05 on Saturday. Friday is FFA and Ag Night, and Saturday is Billet Appreciation Night. Lock in your seats for all the fights, checks, and goals now at LincolnStars.com. Not many businesses can say they've made it 60 years, but Madsen's Bowling and Billiards can. With 12 bowling lanes and the biggest pool room in Nebraska, where else would you go to enjoy an afternoon or evening? There's a great daily specials like $2 Tuesdays, games of bowling, shoe rentals, draft beers, and tacos, all just $2 each. Have a delicious burger at EJ's Lounge before or after your bowling or pool session, and you'll leave satisfied. Madsen's Bowling and Billiards at 47th and Dudley. Hey, Husker Nation, Matt Davison here with 1890. It's an exciting time to be a Husker fan, and to keep that momentum going, we need your help. Nebraska's always been a leader in college athletics, and we're doing the same through name, image, and likeness. NIL is a unique opportunity for every Husker fan to have a direct impact on the success of our programs. Through 1890, 100% of your contribution goes to the student athletes. So go to 1890nebraska.com, choose your sport, become a member, and help the Huskers recruit and retain the best. Go Big Red. Early break with Sip and Jake. I'd like to have my fun maybe more like on like a, a Tuesday, like in February or something. Let's see if I can pull a prank on somebody. I, I, yeah. yeah, but not well, on it's prank like day. It's like a total amateur hour. Yeah, it's just like yeah, National Prank Day. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I do got a little announcement. To make. What's that? Oh, wait, breaking news? I won't be here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Monday. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, what, kitty? This, 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 April this. Fool's. Oh! <laughs> He got it. <laughs> he got it. That's actually well done. That's so good. Early break with Sip and Jake from 6 to 8 every weekday morning on 93.7 The Ticket. Landmark Implement is your local authorized John Deere dealer. Landmark's trained and certified sales staff will help you find the right equipment for your needs at a price that's right for you, all backed by Landmark's extensive parts and service network. Whether it's a tractor, planter, combine, an easy track lawnmower, or gator, every piece of equipment in pre-owned inventory is put through a rigorous inspection so it's ready to work hard for you. Landmark's team works together to make sure everything that is sold meets their quality standards. Learn more at LandmarkImp.com or stop into a local Landmark location and experience the Landmark difference. Attention all Wings fans. 89 Cent Wings are back on Tuesdays at Buffalo Wings and Rings in Lincoln. Enjoy the best wings in town for boneless or traditional at a price that makes the whole family happy. And now at the Williamsburg Village Wings and Rings, you can enjoy $1.50 Tall Boys in Bud Light, Coors Light, Bush Light, and Michelob Ultra every day after 7 p.m. and all day on Sundays. Get to Wings and Rings today and make sure to stop by on Tuesdays for 89 Cent Wings. On the block with Strick and Austin. I think about all the infrastructure that got built up behind the scenes by, by Coach Osborne that Coach Solich took over, and then some of that infrastructure was eroded. Matt Rule still has to prove this, but I think Matt Rule's style is that, yeah, he'd like the infrastructure in place, but I think Matt Rule has the personality to do everything in his power to bend it to the way he wants it. Weekdays from 2 to 4 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com.
Hi, Sean Callahan here of HuskerOnline.com, inviting you to join us here on 93.7 The Ticket every Saturday morning now in our new time. We're on from 8 to 9 with the weekly Husker Online radio show. We'll give you the latest in recruiting. We'll talk about what's going on with both football, basketball, and we'll probably share a few stories from the inside. It's every Saturday morning right here on 93.7 The Ticket. It's the Husker Online radio show from 8 to 9 a.m. Rain, snow, or shine, John Henry's is here to keep your home's plumbing systems working properly no matter what kind of weather Nebraska throws at us. From unclogging toilets and drains to installing new water heaters and water treatment systems, John Henry's is your plumbing expert in the Lincoln and Omaha communities. Visit us at calljh.com or call John Henry's. 45-55-55 John Henry's Plumbing Heating and Air And Electrical Back to Old School with DP and J On 93.7 The Ticket And theticketfm.com Well, we're back. Jay Foreman, Austin Norman, old school. Uh, DP is on his way. Probably is up in Omaha uh, for the Supernovas. Depends Pre- on how fast Rico drives. Yeah. Uh, Rico don't be driving fast either. Uh, but Two kids. Pre- he can't be driving that fast. He's a careful driver. That's true. Pre-game show starts at 6. First serve at 7. Uh, Supernovas looking to bounce back after uh, stubborn their toe after out there in San Diego. So a quick turnaround for them. So they got to be uh, ready to compete tonight. Uh, be another great atmosphere up there as well. But I was uh, talking about the freshman, the true freshman mindset as a quarterback. Um, you know, they don't have any, you know, tape of what, you know, like, you know, whole, you know, tape to cr- critique besides high school. And, you know, obviously they've been very dominant players and have a lot of potential. So up here every day, they have to grade themselves and their tape at a higher level than they've ever done before. And how do you do that? You you have to dive into the details. You cannot just watch a play one time and be like, oh, I did this. You got to watch what you did. You got to watch what the running back did. You got to watch what the defense did. You got to watch what the right tackle left, whatever everything everybody does. And then how you played off of it because you have to watch a play Verse a coverage or watch a play and look at your concepts and there will be another play that somewhat marries that concept or watch or say, okay, well, against cover three, I'm, if I'm running, you know, spider Y flat, you know, Z option or whatever, it, you got to look at there. You got to look at it both at the play side that it was originally called, but then also if it's on the other side of the formation, because it's different when you're throwing from one side of the formation to the other or one side of the field to the next. So for them, every day is a state championship. Every day is a big game. Every game, every, every rep is hugely important for them to be successful and to make that quicker transition. Now I think it's great that they're both early enrollees can establish themselves from a, you know, work standpoint, respect standpoint, and, you know, try to take the bull by the horn. So as an upperclassman, how do you, you know, give your respect? To, to those guys like what do they have to do well, they to gotta earn, earn it yeah what, yeah, what do they, they do to earn they it? gotta work mm-hmm. they gotta work they gotta you know like what best, are you looking for yeah best thing you could do is, is let your past do the talking let let your let your actions be your words and you know shut up and show up and that's it and mm-hmm. and that's not saying that you can't have a voice or you know be there but at the end of the day you're here for a reason i'm here for a reason we need you and i and, and you need me but I've done it, done it before, especially as a defender. I want to see what you can do because that's the best way. If you want to earn the respect that you want, you have got to perform. And perform, performing is not just a big play here. You have got to be consistent. You got to be mentally tough. You got to be willing to deal with adversity, and you can't uh, let success, whatever you may view it as, go to your head quickly. Because there's going to be a time that you're going to have to lean on your teammates because you're going through a rough patch. So, you know, you, you got to earn the stripes. There's no, there's no like set number of things you got to do. You either do it or you don't. You know what it looks like. Are you know, are you early to meetings or are you a guy walking in late? Are you accountable to your teammates and accountable to yourself? What standard are you trying to uphold, even though you're making mistakes? Are you having the right intentions every day at practice? Are you coming to practice 
and focus 100% on football? Can I depend on you? What, how, what type of teammate are you? You know, are you a one teammate in front of everybody and another teammate away? Are you consistent? All that stuff goes into it. And now all those things outside of football will lead to better success and more consistent play, you know, on the field. So it, they go hand in hand, you know, even, you know, are you finding a way to skip class? Are you finding a way to, you know, do as little as possible with maximum, um, you know, I guess, result or output? The interesting part to me about being a quarterback, not that I would now I didn't even play high school football, but we heard the reports about, you know, Dylan's showing up before weightlifting to throw. Right. Right. On the one hand, yes, that's bonus work. Like he doesn't have to do that. He's there to be in the weight room. But at the same time, as a quarterback, especially, or a young wide receiver trying to crack the rotation, I feel like it, you don't even get credit for doing that extra work because yeah. that's what's expected of you. Yeah. Well, but you like for a young kid to know that. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it really helps him that he grew up in an NFL locker room. He, you know, he knows who Matt Stafford is, knows him on a personal level, so he's able to pick his brain anytime he wants. His dad is a Hall of Fame player, one of the greatest offensive linemen to play here, so he knows what it looks like. He has a tremendous amount of support and a support system to give him little nuggets. But then also the best thing about it, he's willing to do it. So, um, yeah, you can't give him credit for it, but you also want to make sure, you know what, He's doing exactly what he needs to do. Better to see it than not see it. Exactly. It, it's look, it's not going to lead to maybe directly to wins and losses, but I can tell you if he didn't do it, it would lead to more losses than wins. And so um, it's good to see it. And also I think he, he, he's, if he, you know, he's not, if he, I know he's doing it, it's setting the standard for everybody else. If you're a junior or senior and whatever position and you're not early and the young freshman fresh out of high school is, is here, don't even know his way around campus really. And he's putting in extra work. Well, then you're behind, you know, shame on you. You know, nobody's above um, improvement or being challenged or competing for their spot. And so uh, that's the environment that they're in. And hopefully more people are taking the uh, lead uh, from not only uh, Dylan Riello, but the rest of the quarterbacks and the guys that are putting in the effort start to get up into that 90, 95 percentile of guys that get it. You'll start to be winning 90, 95 percent of your game. So. Anyways, we're going to take a quick break. Come back at the top of the 5 o'clock hour. Jay Foreman, Austin Orman, DP is on the road in the O, in Omaha, in the Metro. Old School, we'll be right back. You're listening to Old School with DP and Jay. Download the mobile app and listen wherever you are on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. The Omaha Supernovas are back in action this Thursday, April 4th versus the Columbus Fury at CHI Health Center in Omaha. The Mullen Motors pregame show with Darren Pearson and Renee Saunders starts at 6 p.m. with first serve at 7. Make sure to tune in to the next Ag Appraisal Realty postgame show right after the match ends. Catch all the action on your flagship station, 93.7 The Ticket, and statewide on the Supernovas radio network. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM first. 93.7 The Ticket. Landmark Implement is your local authorized John Deere dealer. Landmark's trained and certified sales staff will help you find the right equipment for your needs at a price that's right for you. All backed by Landmark's extensive parts and service network. Whether it's a tractor, planter, combine, an easy track lawnmower or gator, every piece of equipment in pre-owned inventory is put through a rigorous inspection so it's ready to work hard for you. Landmark's team works together to make sure everything that is sold meets their quality standards. Learn more at LandmarkImp.com or stop into a local Landmark location and experience the Landmark difference. Iron High Construction is hiring. They're looking for hardworking, self-motivated individuals who are team players. Iron High Construction has openings for an experienced project manager, estimator, apprentice, skilled laborer, and erector or installer. They will train the right people and make sure you understand the position and requirements. At Iron Hide Construction, it's own it, be honest, and do it right. Apply today and learn more about their other benefits at ironhideconstruction.com where they're committed to you every step of the way. Load up on meat and more this spring at the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese at 84th and Havre. This week's special through April 9th is buy one, get one free on 8-ounce flat iron steaks, limit four per visit. Also, $1.50 off all Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauces. And don't forget about lunch on Fired Up Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations at 84th and Havelock and 30th and Yankee Hill in Lincoln or 168th and Maple in Omaha. Get to the Mercado today for the best meat in town. Finally, a good reason to have a smart house. Just say... 
Alexa. Play 93.7 The Ticket, and we'll magically start playing. How's it work? Nobody knows. Don't ask questions. Whether you're looking for a place to stay for a concert at PBA, a Nebraska home game, or just a night on the town, the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket is the place for you. Enjoy an evening at one of many restaurants or bars within a short walking distance. Business travelers at the hotel will enjoy free high-speed internet access, a 24-hour business center, and large in-room workstations. And check out the Bistro, where you'll enjoy healthier food and beverage options, as well as high-tech conveniences. Book your room today at the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket. Rico here with HIS Auto Care at 70th and Van Dorn, letting you know HIS is a great place to bring your vehicle for service. With superior service, bumper to bumper, we'll treat your vehicle like it's your mother's. Doesn't get any better than that. So call 402-488-8934 and HIS Auto will make you glad you did. 5% off, mention this ad, and for sure your mother will be proud you called. 402-488-8934, HIS Auto Care, 70th and Van Doren. God bless you. Banking should feel personal, not intimidating. At Western National Bank, we're about real connections, founded by two ordinary guys with an extraordinary vision to know each and every customer personally. Fees, they suck. Avoid all fees with Western National Bank's Compass Checking Account. No monthly fees, no minimum balances, and get this, 5.12 APY on the first $1,000. Open your Compass Checking Account online in five minutes or less at mywnb.com. Experience the difference with Western National Bank. Visit mywnb.com. Member FDIC. Start your Sundays off right with Jeff and Nicole Essink on Fitness Fanatics. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, how to achieve fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners and gym goers. It's Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sundays on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Back to Old School with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Five oh four in Lincoln, Jay Foreman, Austin Norman, old school. We are live at ten forty O Street. Beautiful day out on this Thursday, Thirsty Thursday. If you got to listen to uh, Kevin Meyer, Meyer, Cork and Bottle, and Eric Strickland, um, we are brought to you by the Mercado Certified Piedmont Special Ingredients Butcher Shop. Two locations in Lincoln, eighty fourth and Havelock, thirty three Yankee Hill. Uh, it'd be a perfect day to fire up that grill, though. Man, <laughs> it's beautiful outside. No you wind. for our staff meeting tonight. I huh. care if you want to go grill for us. Nah, I wish I was, man. But no, not today. Dang, not today. Next time. But okay. uh, anyways, you know, uh, it was the first. I think today was a good day. It was the first time you had, um, you know, all the quarterbacks talking in the spring. But obviously, with Dylan uh, Riola flipping to Nebraska, is obviously was a big get for this. You know, the whole you know university and state. Um, I thought it was good the first time that he got to talk and uh, see how he carried himself, listen to him. Maybe get a little bit of an insight on what his mindset is. It's, you know, I know I know him personally, so I think it's you know very. Um, he has a good he has a good uh, mindset for the for the game and uh, can can be a special player. But he's got a lot of work to do. He's got a lot of proving to do. But uh, he's willing to you know knows that and he's willing to go go for it. So um, we got you want to hear from him? We yeah. got some cuts. Yeah, let's see let's see what let's see what a little little Dylan Dylan talk about a little Dilly. All right, uh, here's your nephew on how did you set expectations for yourself uh, i just try to take it day by day um you know we had the spring right now so just you know really focus on each day of spring ball um and take every day as its own and then um you know i try to think too far ahead you know i want to get the connection down with the guys um, and really just be around them you know just get to know them get comfortable with them and um that's the main focus yeah, I like it, man. I mean, it's uh, you know, you got to win the day, and you got to focus on what's in 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 uh in front of you. You know, when you know, I tell my basketball players, you know, one possession at a time, mm. one play at a time. Um, he's too young and doesn't have experience enough to start to, to look forward to look past even the first rep in practice. Um, every day, everything that he does is a learning experience, and so. Um, it's a good mindset to have, and it is, it's good that he understands, you know, what's in front of him and understand that he has to, you know, I, I like it that he's not even thinking about the season, worried about spring. This, you know, these spring practices are his games in his season right now, so he has to try to win this day, which is his season, um, and he's got to try to win every day, and it doesn't just, you know, it doesn't stop. At, or it's not just the days that you're practicing. It's the days that you're not practicing. 
it's how you recover. It, it could because you have to learn how to take care of yourself at a higher level now so you can be as fresh mentally, physically, and spiritually to be the player that you want to be. And then just have realistic expectations. I mean, a lot of it, you know, a lot of his success will be dependent on how everybody else plays around him and then how he, he how he is able to play with them and within the system. And so it's, it's a collaborative effort. I mean, obviously the quarterback, you know, gets a lot of credit and gets a lot of blame for everything. And so you got to make sure that you're, you're willing and able to deal with some adversity because there will be some adverse times. This is the best league that you can be in. Um, it's or a lot of fun or the, the, S- the SEC or, or whatever. So, um, you know, so he, he's, he's playing the best of the best. And so that's what he's got to prepare. Like my bad wrong button. Um, that's all right. Let's men- see what he has to say. Mentioning those other playmakers developing chemistry with the wide receivers. Here yeah. We go. It's been a lot of fun. You know, they come in every day, work really hard, study their tape and, you know, they go out on the field and they, and they make a lot of big plays. You know, they take, take the pressure off of us and they go and catch the ball when they need to get open to routes when they, you know, when the number's called. So it's been a lot of fun. They work really hard and, you know, off the field, they're a really good group of guys to be around. Yeah, that's good, man. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you want to just be a part of the the the, 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 the group. You know, I mean, you, you just want to come in and do your job and be an asset to the team, uh, get to know the players outside of, you know, practicing. And so you can get that connection on to all the, all the receivers because you never know who you're going to play with. I think Nebraska – you know, obviously you have Jamal Banks and, you know, some of the guys that played last year, you know, obviously with Lloyd, um, you know, sure, Doss, you got some of the young guys even coming in. You got Malachi Coleman that's on the mend. Um, you got Nair that's, that's you know, if he's healthy, he's an established player. And then you got the tight end group as well. So you got obviously those guys and you got Carter Nelson coming in. You got Thomas Fedoni, Forkature. So he has a, a like the depth of players that have played. Now you need to you know, create continuity with all of them because obviously you're expecting all of them to, to com- contribute at some form or fashion in some level all season long. And so he's doing everything you do. Every, like I said, winning every single day individually and collectively is going to be better for the team. So what we talked about the, the three different teams that these guys are split up into the receivers listed on Dylan Raiola's team are Ja'Cory Barney, freshman out of Miami, mm-hmm. Demetrius Bell, who redshirted last year, and then right. What a Jaylen great, Lloyd. great off season uh, mm-hmm. for him. And, and I don't mean to cut you off is that, you know, I think uh, Marcus Satterfield talked about him at one point, maybe last year, mm-hmm. I think um, where, you know, he probably he came in, you know, a little underweight or, you know, underdeveloped and he dove right into Corey Coleman's weight program and the nutritionist. And by the end of the season, he was saying, man, he's 15, 20 pounds of good weight and he's gotten faster and he's kept his, quickness and I think he was somebody that they were really pleased with mm-hmm. uh, at the red shirt level or practice squad now he's get the you know look they're young guys developing together you got to go through it together man I mm-hmm. mean it's it's the way it is and and I don't know when they they'll change I don't know how they decide who's on whose team but I think it's a good starting point for all of them to create some continuity create some competitive um or competitive environment and see you know who's standing at the end of the game we almost had our first hit right there Oh yeah! Did you do? Trying to watch? Did it. you see it? Did you see it? <laughs> He's still just strolling. Look at him. Yeah. Hey, and he got mad at him too. He hit the car. I... Hey man, this is. They, they, look at him. Here look comes at, the here, legend. Here, here, here he is. Here's the look legend. At him. There he is. Walk look at him. Walk. Steel. Look at him. Got the Hoka shoes on. Got the got the parka on. He got bumped by the car, man. Mm-hmm. I would have been all on that hood. <laughs> Dead, jumping on him. Yeah, no, I would have just been laid out. You, no. you, I'm dead. I would have killed laid me. Yeah, you killed me. I would have been shaking and everything. Show me that money. Yeah, yeah, it would have been a whole deal right there. Don't touch me. You know what I mean? Like, don't touch me. I, yes, but uh, so so Dylan isn't green to that point. Yeah. We're, we're in the green, no contact jersey. But we mentioned the receivers he's throwing with on his team, but not on his team. Like he's not just throwing to Barney Bell yeah. and Lloyd. Like he is getting reps with banks and Nayer and Coleman yeah. and Doss, right? Somewhere. Yeah. I'm sure he is. I mean, they're doing obviously when you do team takeoff and stuff like that, <clears throat> I'm sure they're doing one-on-ones, you know, with the receivers mm-hmm. and see with the quarterbacks and all that. So I'm sure he's getting reps with all of them. I think these are just the teams that they're in at some point in time. And they're somehow, you know, creating a competitive environment and keeping a tally. What is that? Why you're trying to do that is because you're trying to make sure that every day you come to practice, it's a competitive nature and you can kind of, you know, form some, you know, team bonding that way. Um, 
So, uh, you know, I think for him, he's just got to continue to work every single day and get better at, you know, because one thing, you know, the, but when you're a young player, I get to talk about this at the end of the first hour is, you know, you could, there might be a defense that you might not understand fully at when it's a first initially introduced, at least in my case. And then when you're, when you're like operating that defense during that call, you might be a little like slow as sluggish because you're drop you know, I'm dropping, I'm doing, I'm, I'm thinking while I'm playing. Well, then the light goes on and then you look a lot different. The funny thing about it when you're a young guy is like, you think you arrived and made it because you figured something out. Well, guess what happened? You put so much, you, you didn't time manage enough or good enough that you put so much effort trying to figure out this Rubik's cube. The easier one that you got introduced that you probably were doing, say like what we used to call 11 robber, which is essentially man to man cover three cover, you know, which is, you know, we could run, we used to run, you know, three or tray or whatever. That then you go back, then you you but you then you stub your toe on that. So the hardest thing for young guys to do is continue to stack good days and good days, and then mm. when you get to week two or week three, and they put in some of the basic stuff, that's your foundation stuff. You got to make sure that you ha- continue on a day to day basis. Start at zero every day when you're starting. You know you're, you're studying. Look at the base defense. Look at every single, in my case, line stunt and stuff like that. Because you don't want to be hesitant. That could be, you don't in a, you want to have every single play that you have. Give your best. Give yourself the best chance to win that rep, and then be as competitive as possible. You're onto something. Here's what Dylan Raiola said. He needs to work on. Needs to continue working there on throughout go. spring See? ball. Yeah, I think. Um, I think creating explosive plays has been. Um, you know, probably one of the, one of the better things I've done. Um, and I think something I got to catch up on is, you know, the protections, understanding <clears throat> where, where my answers are and things like that. So uh, I think it's just, just the scheme wise catching up, um, you know, obviously having Heinrich being able to teach us a scheme. Um, very lucky to have him in the room and, and have some experience on the field. Uncle Jay knows what's that. I'm the prophet, man. Mm-hmm. See? That's what that's what the word I was thinking. Of. Mm. Yeah, so Jay Stradamus. Yeah, there it is. There. <laughs> well, I didn't. I did predict somebody was going to get a hit. <laughs> yeah, he did. did, call it. did you but he was still standing. <laughs> he, you know what I mean? He's like Black Steel out there. He's like Valerian Steel. I mean, he took that bump and kept on ticking. He kept on rolling. Kept a lick and kept on ticking. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it's you know learning the new learning the why, man. I, and I'll never forget you know my dad telling me this, and and obviously I played, you know. Uh, they, you know, always played running back, uh, offense in, in, in high school. And then he was, te- I remember him telling me this when I was a running back too, you know, I had some success my junior year, you know, you're getting recruited and all this other stuff. And he's like, you need to know what the whole offensive line is doing, what the tight ends are doing, what the receivers are doing on every single play, not just what you were doing. You need to be a well-rounded player. And I never really understood why, what he meant when he initially told me. And then we had a conversation. He's like, you got to understand why a play will work, where it will work. And it's not just what you practice. It's about what defense they could run. So he's like, you need to know the lines. You need to know everything. He's like, and so he's, he taught me that at a real young age. And then when I switched over to defense, he's like, you need to obviously learn what you need to do, but then learn the defense and line stunts, learn how different players play certain bases base or like certain base defenses because here's an example right so christian peter and jason peter they're like the ultimate duo duo christian brute strength pass rushing ability bull, bull rusher jason a better athlete taller and just a you know just a different type of player well then their backup say was jeff olgard and scott salzman at one point in time or even say like larry townsend and jason jenkins Right. Larry Townsend looked like it was just he's the dude you want to get off the bus. Right. But he plays a more he played a more finesse game, even though he's as big or was about the same size as Christian. Whereas you have Scott Saltzman, who played behind Jason. So Jason Peter. He's probably about six, five, uh, easily six, five, legit six, four, I think six, five. Right. Scott Saltzman might have been six, one maybe 255 quick mm-hmm. right so what what how does that affect the linebacker right i have two guys that can anchor in there and allow me to f- run free 
versus a guy that's going to that's going to be more of a one gap up the field type of guy. Mm. <coughs> so how does that change your responsibility how you get off the ball what so your when first Sal- step when, is? Yeah, when Saltzman's in there or Olgar is going to be in there, I got to be a thumper. I got to um, it is I got to I got to get that off the double team. I got to expect a tackle to come down on me a little bit quicker because the tackle saying, okay, the guard can handle on a, on a quick double team. He can slip up to the second level. Well, that means I got to probably play a little bit more faster and quicker over the top and then quickly downhill. Mm-hmm. Or if I'm going underneath based on what he's doing, I got to be more or less to shoot the gap versus I can play more honest with Jason and Christian. And then I'll play off Jason as well, because I know he's going to be when he gets, you know, I had to know his stance when he was really going to be trying to, you know, third and long, he's trying to get up field. I got to understand that because if they run a draw play, I got to understand he might be widening a little bit. So I can't mm-hmm. vacate that gap. So just these are just the things that you get from being at home right now. You know, obviously you get your schoolwork done. So instead of watching friends, you know, for the same show 15 times, I'm trying to watch this. I'm trying to watch some game tape from last year. I'm trying to watch. Somebody I might want to emulate my game afterwards. I want to watch maybe somebody, say like in all the quarterbacks case, somebody that, I don't know, I, let's just say South Carolina, right? Because that's where Satterfield came from, you know, with the scheme. Watch them when they were at their best running certain plays. I'm sure there's cut-ups galore that they can get a hold of. Or you can ask for it. And then mm-hmm. really study in there and put yourself into that game. The mental reps are so huge for young guys. When you're saying watch film and i just want to clear this up for anyone that might not have ever had their hands on a playbook you're not just watching the tv broadcast oh no you're watching the i guess like all 22 all 22 okay do you get you, anything from behind the quarterback or oh, yeah. facing the offense all those it, angles it's different right so 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 behind so when you're watching it say behind the the defense or behind the quarterback it helps me number one if i'm watching it from behind the defense to the offense now i can look at offensive lineman stance kind of try to pick up on their like you know little nuances with their body um in the cadence maybe get you know when they're going to snap the ball um look at where they actually when they motion how far they get outside of the tackle box if there's not a tight end or outside of where the tight end is how displaced he becomes the timing of when they run certain run plays or pass plays um and then you know on the flip side um, if you're when you're watching behind the quarterback and say as an offensive player, you can watch, okay, well, when he's really rushing from the outside, if he's in a two point stance, is he really forward leaning? Does he have his arm swinging? Does everything look the same? That's why I'm a big believer in whether you're playing man or zone. If you really, really get locked in, you can run with any motion and shifts that, that really will give the offense fits because they use motion and shifts to see if you're in man or zone. Yeah, self diagnose it. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, um, can you what I what I call rock and roll your safeties from depth? Can you have a day, safety that looks like he's in the box, be athletic enough, and also in tuned enough with the offensive scheme to go from in the box safety to a deep middle, deep middle. or or on the hash or or half field safety, or you know what I mean, or a quarter mm-hmm. safety? Can you do it? That's how you become a next level defense. That's when you think like. Okay, the defense was good last year. I was reading where they're um, 13th in overall defense, maybe 11th in scoring defense, or so, you know, give or take, or something like that. Well, when you want to try to go to the next level, these are the things that you give each player, and, and every player should challenge themselves to be better at. Can I be just a little bit better at getting off blocks? Can I really understand when I need to set the edge outside the tight end, or can I take a calculated gamble and blow up the tight end and set the edge inside the tight end? And there's Mm -hmm. a distinct difference. And it's based on where the action starts when it's attacking you right on ball side or does it come from the backside? And how and it can go in in the action or the potential coming strong side can change based on if the running back shifts or the tight end or motion. Mm -hmm. So you got to understand. And and when you do that, you're going to like all these things that I'm talking about will come up in the season. That's what those are the things that used to when we were really playing well here and when we're really playing well like on any defense i was a part of those are the conversations we had at the training table those are the conversations we had in the locker room those are the conversations we had in third down meetings in the nfl after hard practice in the weight room on the plane on the bus ride 
Um, and then obviously here at Nebraska, those are the things that when you're really, really trying to be the best and be a well-rounded defense and a well-rounded player, those are things you talk about on that, top of the basics now. <laughs> right. See, see that, that really stands out to me because when I think of spring, I think of install, I think of some individual work, but what you're saying for the next level is noticing the arm swings, noticing the weight distribution. Yeah. So like Isaac Gifford saying, Hey, Ty, I noticed when we're doing a stunt and you're going inside you favor this way. You're not playing straight up. You're almost yeah. cheating a little bit to yeah. give a step. Is that what those great teams do to take that next step? Well, is they notice these little things on film and make it all look as similar as possible? You should, and you should be doing that individually every spring. Because mm. every spring you're starting over. But you if you ask me to like diagnose myself, I'm sure it'd be hard for me to see. Like just right. what I do. You know, it feels natural. So that's almost where it feels like you need a teammate to teammate accountability. Right. Hey, yeah. I saw this in watching film. I noticed this. Is do you notice yourself doing this? When I used to come off the field, I had used to talk to. Um, so when I'd come off the field, I'd talk to um, Ben Butenbach and or Carlos Pope, and we'd go over everything. Like, okay, we had Levin Robert. Okay, they came with a you know half boot waggle. Okay, be a pair, be prepared for. It. Oh, what do you think? What, okay, this is what I saw from the right guard. We saw it on tape. Remember when we talked mm-hmm. about that? When they are in. 11 personnel and get the trips and any time of any type of former trips late in the late in the play clock is outside run those are all the things you try to work those are the things you work on right now because you're going against the offense that's going to provide some sort of pressure uh, or you on you that's going to test your fundamentals spring is about foundation fundamentals but just because you're that's the that's the basis of it install that they're installing the defense so this is getting better at the defense. So you're, you're, you're setting the foundation and you're installing the standard, the work ethic, the want to, you got to love this game. I cannot emphasize it enough. It, it you have got it, the, your confidence comes from your work, true work. Not when everybody's watching, not in front of the camera, not on the internet. You don't need to tell them you're grinding. You're showing them that you're grinding. And then it's the extra things that you do to become great. And, um, that's how, and if you get, get more guys willing to do that, to you know, sell out and 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 you know, what do you say, buy in or whatever the, you know, the the phrase is for 2024, <laughs> it, it works. And you be you start to exceed expectations. You start to raise the standard. You start to hold yourself more accountable than say team rules, or then you be able to hold somebody else accountable, and they can hold you accountable. And then that's where you you you. You have that great competition. I want to beat Austin out, but when we step on that field, you know, against UTEP, we're playing our best. And that's what I always talk about. You operate individually. Because when I used to roll down 10th Street or whatever it is right here, go to the stadium, yes, I want to play my best game. But what are the reasons for? Not only for myself, my family, and all the other stuff, I want to play for my teammates. I want to play for my team. I want to play for my coaches. Because I feel like that's my job and that's what I own. So you're 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 operating individually. You're thinking collectively. I never mm-hmm. I never took a chance that was outside of the realms for the betterment of the team. You mentioned spring is about fundamentals. What are the fundamentals you're working on as a defense, and what are the fundamentals you're trying to put pressure on for the offense? Oh, I mean, well, defense. You know, I'm sure they want. You're always trying to you know, be better at this, you know, your base defense kind of what, you know, where you just, you, you got to roll it. Right. Which is what I mean is if you're don't get the call in, you got to have a pl- couple of play at defense. So you want to have your base defense that you hang your hat on. You mm-hmm. want to be better at that. So, but you want to be better at understanding the defense, understanding your gap integrity, owning your gap, playing, playing, you know, uh, doing your job and then playing football, you know, tackling communication is always key because I feel like that allows you to play more freer. So essentially you control everybody by just over communicating. Um, you want to build depth. You want to be able to see guys compete a little bit more or, or, you know, win 50-50 matchups, create an environment that you put enough pressure on the offense that they got to understand they can't afford a day off. You want to be able to try to create more turnovers. How do you create more turnovers? Get more bodies to, to the ball with the right play entry, but then also with the right force, right? And more hats, hats to the ball, more for more forced fumbles, more opportunities for a young offense led by three young quarterbacks right now, right? More opportunities equal more points. Offensively, what do you want to do? 
you want to obviously running, blocking, tackling, taking care of the ball. We want to be a better running team, execute better offensive line. We want to take our best games and continue to make that the bottom line standard, right? Coach Samuel um, had the, the the best thing that he ever told me. And he's like, look, he's like, look, chief. <laughs> That's what he <laughs> he's like, you're a young pup. He's like, there's going to be days that you don't have it physically, mentally. He's like, but you got to have to be able, he's like, you got to understand the 85 rule. He's like, did you ever have the 85 rule up there with Coach Mike Grant, son of Buck Grant, Coach your dad, the great Chuck Foreman up there at Eden Prairie High School? And I was like, no. I was like, we ain't even have 85 dudes on the team. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is it? He's like, you have to be able to, on your worst days, grade out at 85% or higher mm. on your worst days because that's winning football. That's championship football. And he's like, you can't have that be, be uh, the, the, the normal but that's the worst that you can be to be out there. And that's where that you got to have that on like offense, defense, and special teams. And so it's every day for this team is, is a, is a way to find a way to get better. You got, you know, and as you go along in spring ball, the, you should be, you shouldn't be looking forward to the end. You should be looking at like, this is another day to get better because we have a lot to prove a lot. Five wins is okay. Right. But we got to be making a bowl game. We got to make some noise um, because we got a lot of great things going. Um, but they'll be even greater if we start winning some games. Some real, I mean, you know, I mean, that, that goes without saying, but it starts right now. You're laying your foundation out right now. So, anyways, good first segment, that five o'clock hour. We're going to get a big push into Commissioner Foreman um, about this Super League and how I'd run it and how it gets to the point of what I think it should be and run it. Jay Foreman, Austin Orman, Old School. We'll be right back. Watch Old School live on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch. Old School with DP and Jay on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Load up on meat and more this spring at the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese at 84th and Happy. This week's special through April 9th is buy one, get one free on 8-ounce flat iron steaks, limit four per visit. Also, $1.50 off all Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauces. And don't forget about lunch on Fired Up Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations at 84th and Havelock and 30th and Yankee Hill in Lincoln or 168th and Maple in Omaha. Get to the Mercado today for the best meat in town. Spring is here and it's time to wake up Judson. Judson Irrigation is eager and ready to get your sprinkler system up and running for the season. Judson's technicians will check for winter damage, adjust your sprinkler heads, and show you how to set your controller for effective sprinkling coverage. The Judson Irrigation team is here for you. Stay safe. Keep summer green. Call Judson Irrigation 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. <gasps> the Mill Coffee and Tea. Formerly with only four Lincoln locations. Guess what? What? There's five Lincoln locations now. Oh my gosh. That's 25% more Lincoln locations than there used to be. Can you even imagine a world where there's only four Lincoln Mill locations? Feels like ages ago. We were all so young then. <sighs> the Mill on 11th, located right alongside 93.7 The Ticket Studios, 1040 O Street. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox, KFXL Weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. The Lincoln forecast for today, we'll see lots of sunshine to go along with light winds and an afternoon high around 60. Tonight, clear skies and calm winds with a low around 30. And tomorrow, we'll see mainly sunny skies and more mild weather with an afternoon high around 64. I'm meteorologist Kyle Tucker for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Rain, snow, or shine, John Henry's is here to keep your home's plumbing systems working properly no matter what kind of weather Nebraska throws at us. From unclogging toilets and drains to installing new water heaters and water treatment systems, John Henry's is your plumbing expert in the Lincoln and Omaha communities. Visit us at calljh.com or call John Henry's. 435-5555 John Henry's Plumbing Heating and Air And Electrical If you're in Seward or Milford, listen up 
Select Plumbing is now servicing your area with no trip charges from Lincoln. Select Plumbing works on a variety of issues for your home and business, including general plumbing, water heaters, faucet and fixture repair, underground sewer and water repairs, backflow testing, and more. Keep your property free from leaks and other issues. Call today for a free estimate, 402-560-6197. It's not just Lincoln, Waverly, and the surrounding area anymore. It's also Seward and Milford with no trip charges. Contact Select Plumbing to acquire 402 402- 560-6197. Are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene? The Electrical Workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. Whether you're looking for a place to stay for a concert at PBA, a Nebraska home game, or just a night on the town, the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket is the place for you. Enjoy an evening at one of many restaurants or bars within a short walking distance. Business travelers at the hotel will enjoy free high-speed internet access, a 24-hour business center, and large in-room workstations. And check out the Bistro, where you'll enjoy healthier food and beverage options, as well as high-tech conveniences. Book your room today at the Courtyard Lincoln Downtown Haymarket. Start your Sundays off right with Jeff and Nicole Essink on Fitness Fanatics. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, how to achieve fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners and gym goers. It's Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sundays on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Early break with Sip and Jake. I'd like to have my fun maybe more like on like a, a Tuesday like in February or something. Let's see if I can pull a prank on somebody. I, I, yeah. yeah, but not well, on it's prank It's like a total amateur hour. Yeah, it's just like yeah, National Prank Day. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I do got a little announcement. What's that? Oh, wait, breaking news? I won't be here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Monday. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Wait, he, this, 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 April this. Fool's. Oh, ah! <laughs> he got it. <laughs> he got it. That's actually well done. <laughs> so good. Early break with Sip and Jake from 6 to 8 every weekday morning on 93.7 The Ticket. On the block with Strick and Austin. I think about all the infrastructure that got built up behind the scenes by, by Coach Osborne that Coach Solich took over, and then some of that infrastructure was eroded. Matt Rule still has to prove this, but I think Matt Rule's style is that, yeah, he'd like the infrastructure in place, but I think Matt Rule has the personality to do everything in his power to bend it to the way he wants it. Weekdays from 2 to 4 on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Back to old school with DP and J on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Well, we're back. Last big segment uh, before we uh, put a bow on this Thursday Thursday and turn it over to uh, DP, Coach Renee Saunders, and Rico for the Supernovas uh, pregame show. First serve is at 7. Stay tuned uh, because it's always a great call. Plus, the Supernovas are looking to get it. But a little bit of a get back here. Uh, a quick turnaround from the flight in from San Diego. But um, big news today was the potential or the first, I don't know, mock of what a potential super league could be the one i saw austin was 80 80 teams uh some independents and they had some guys that uh some teams that had to work their way in it now first and foremost what i would do if i was commissioner jay foreman which would be one of the best best decisions the ncaa or college football would make obviously this is this is uh with the understanding that football itself has broken off from everything else now, what I would do is, even though we've broken off from everything else, I would still have educational obligations for you. Um, number one, That's number one. Number two, all players would be under contract that have NIL deals. Um, number three, I would have a panel of unbiased, reasonable, people that we would vote on or pick that would be in the, on a transfer portal board. You would be still allowed one free transfer after two years, unless it's an emergency family, legit medical. And there would have to be time that you would have to do it. I would have, um, one portal time a year 
and that would be it. Now that's all. Now it'd be different based on school and stuff like that. So it might be two because some people are in quarters and semesters. Are you thinking post national championship game and post spring? I would have post national championship, post school ending based on if you're a quarter or a semester. Semester. Okay. So essentially post spring. Yeah. But way post spring. Okay. Um, Had some time to actually sit on campus, think about the future, right. have conversations. And and then also I'd have a potential salary cap ceiling, meaning this is the highest you can go for your cap for your employees, your players. I would have to. Ha I would also make sure that some of these con uh, the contracts are obligated, regardless of what you're you're getting. A certain percentage goes into a trust fund or something like that. Mm. Standard. Mm -hmm. No ifs, ands, what's or but. Every player. But. Every player. Um, okay, so salary cap. You're an NFL guy. You know they can get creative with bonuses and whatnot. Out the window, just straight. No, straight up. Straight no, dollars. No, no bonus. Okay. No bonus. No signing now, bonus. No, no roster no. bonus. No. Okay. Um, now you could do some moving costs or like a car or something like that i mean we could still we can add to we can amend it now i just want to make sure these are the bases mm -hmm. um now i will say also with that being said as a gm of your team every year you're allowed four emergency moves that means you can get somebody out of the portal and break the rule but you got to pay for it okay and how you pay for it you're not paying uh, you, you have to pay whoever you're getting them from or they have to pay out of their contract. I'll figure that out later. So basically like a trade potentially. Yep. Okay. And it, and not during the season. No, mm -hmm. we will down the road. You'll be able to trade during the season, but just starting off, just starting off. Mm -hmm. But then also once you use your emergency, there's salary cap ramifications. You get for what? this season or the for, next season? for that season. Okay. Right. Uh, or for the next season. So okay. it, it would hurt you because you're already kind of set and say you already do it. So it'd be for the next season. Okay. Why Why would I want that? I want it to be where when you make these moves, you're creating some... How I want to know how bad you want to make the moves. And I want loyalty to the players. And I want mm. the players to be loyal to you. Because if you really want to move that bad, you're going to have to pay back some of that NIL money or nullify it. Now, granted, you're smart. You know what you're nullifying and you know what you're getting. Um, I would also create a better connection or more known connection between the coaches and the collectives collectives mm. here's also what i would do suggestions the collectives should have a football board and get in there everybody watched guys that know football played coached it know it why because you want to make sure you don't get fall into the impulsive in the moment i'm going to overpay for a player and then four months later you're mad and you're trying to find out who made the bad decision. Why am I doing that? I want the the negotiation process to be more efficient, but then also I want everybody to be beneficial, benefit off of it, the player and the people that are giving the money. Love that idea. I know you said as well, you know, the, the non-biased people to judge the transfer portal, right? Who determines that? Like, is Commissioner Foreman voting on it? Are like because no, it, like, it, that's your job as a collective. I want to. Okay. I want. I want to see. I want. So you for guys, Nebraska, I, hypothetically, I want your collectives to have your ducks in a row. I want okay, it to. Yes. I want you're you're like at a bank. You have a loan group. Mm -hmm. Then this is no different. Okay. I, like I want it. it to be structured. Um, so now, for Nebraska, who who are you putting on that board? Hypothetically, five person board. Well, you could do it by position. You know, you could, you know, oh, okay. you know, you could have a couple offensive line. You doesn't have to be five, but it, gotcha. you could have a, a board that you want to do it. And you get there, and and it can't be always everybody gets their way either. Just right. give your input, then the decision makers go and make their decision. Mm -hmm. But you're, but you're, you're making a decision with some help. That part, because yeah. I feel like formalizing it might be tough. Yeah. So what I think a good collective should be doing anyway but should do you, yes yeah, just yes consult. consultants right. bring in three or five people that know the position that know the scheme that know wants to, what the team wants to accomplish and say look at this player's film right. look at what we're doing does it fit if it fits what what valuation if, you if, put on it out of this if budget? i was running a collective we have people we have people that run the collective if you really want to up your closing percentage you better have some people that know what they're talking about, that know the game of football, that can speak the language better than you can and can be consultants when need be, 
can help you be closers, right? Because you're gonna have to you're gonna have to close some people. So, some so, brand name recognition, right? Mm -hmm. There's some people that can can swing you from Wisconsin to Nebraska, Notre Dame to Nebraska, or whatever it may be. Go get a kid out of the portal from Oregon that's you know between LSU or, and Nebraska, or, right? Or whatever. whatever it may mm -hmm. be, you know, get that you know, knucklehead that went to that. Alabama, Iowa, back to Alabama. Well, let's stop over in Nebraska real quick. <laughs> Just <laughs> you, a couple hours away. Right. Come say hi. Have a list of guys that you have as consultants that are operating for the betterment of your collective mm. and more importantly, the betterment for the Nebraska football team. So if is their not, job to, to scout ahead kind of to if this guy enter, right. enters the portal? You should be in a collective. Just get people that you call on a consultant. It's like having a, you know, well, look at your boy P. Diddy. He's got to have an attorney on <laughs> uh, uh, on. On call, right? <laughs> that that's part of it. And, and what and here's why here's here's why it's important because you're spending your money probably a little bit better because you're able to close better. You're getting some players that you really really want, and obviously there's got to be communication. There should be communication be, between the scouting department, coaches, and 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 being able to the GM to be able to evaluate the needs of the team. Um, but then also what you're presenting in a product to a player and a family or a um you know, a loved one or whatever, or a guardian that's bringing these athletes here. And this is in every sport, but we're talking about particular football is you're showing them, okay, Nebraska's doing something next level. We got all the fun, all the fun stuff, the toys, but they're actually really, really taking care of us. And actually it's a honor to get an NIL deal from Nebraska. Mm -hmm. You're not entitled to it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then also you got to get around some people that have been in NFL locker rooms, that are that that have done things, that have a good mindset on them. So you know what? He might not fit into your locker room. This is a guy that's only going to be here for like nine months. He's going to hit the bricks. Mm -hmm. Or he's like, you know what? The read I get on him, because you might just run into a conversation. As soon as he gets his check is out. As soon as he has a little bit of success, he actually probably really, he really, really wants to go where Coach Strickland was at. But Strickland, you know, say he went from Auburn to Michigan State and Michigan State didn't have an offer for him or whatever the, the dynamics are. So you got to be aware of that. Hey, listen, this is the dude you might like, but this is the guy he really wants to play for. Well, you know what? He fell into our laps because so-and-so got it. I mean, that's just what you have to do. That's, the, that's how I would set it up. Now, my structure would be Commissioner Foreman. I'm having two vice presidents. It's, it's actually like a mafia pyramid. We're going to have everybody all the way down to the to the ground floor, and we're all going to meet together and congregate together for the, this great game of college football. Who gets your first horse head? I don't know. That's a tough question. It is. Sorry. It's not Andrew, it's not, it's, it's not Andrew Luck's dad, though. Okay. He, he, hey, he didn't hit people over the head. Every, <laughs> every league, everything, it was Andrew Luck's dad. Um, I would probably try to get somebody like a uh, – you know, I would try to get somebody like a Peyton Manning, mm. right? That's a, 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 a gives obviously more cachet than me, um, but a really good sound mind and doesn't take himself too serious. What about like an Elway? No. Okay. Peyton Manning. Well, I was saying you said two. So, no, but the other person I'm going to have maybe like a Gene Smith. Ah, right. Okay. okay. Um, and then we're going to go down from there. And the way I'm going to have it, I'm obviously going to have, I'm going to create, a league of 44 teams. That's my upper echelon teams. Those are the teams that are already have established themselves. The top, let's say, 38 teams have already established themselves. Like as they've been dependable, making bowl games, you know, financially good and all this other stuff. You know, just the top 38 teams. The other six have been ones that are, have recent history of playing their way into those top 44. Everybody has the cap the same. And then you go, then you're going to go, so that's 44. And then you're going to have 22 teams. So that would put you at, or 32 teams, that would put you at 76, right? Mm -hmm. 76 teams. From there, the other 32 are ones that are in your regulatory leagues. And you could break those 32 teams up into four different sections of eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. And obviously your bottom eight is you're almost bottoming out. <laughs> now you have four more that are going to have to wear, can have the potential to work their way up into that bottom eight or in that, you know, work their way up. Did and you it, make that bottom eight play that next four? Yes, you do. Yes. It's kind of like the NBA play in, mm -hmm. you know, and if the higher you up or higher, higher, when you're one, two, three, and four, you might get a buy or whatever. 
but those, you know, you know, uh, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four at the bottom, you guys are getting after it. And also you make your top four play the bottom eight of the order. So it's kind of like you constantly be able to work yourself up. Now, then you'll get teams that, okay, well, it's not fair. Like say like a Virginia Tech or something like that. Well, then step your game up. What it's going to allow, I think what this potentially could do, you could create more loyalty, right? You could, obviously you got to have buyouts and all this other stuff, but then also you ha- you create more competitive environment to where you get guys that you're constantly making them earn their NIL money, earn their benefits, but then also when they do earn it, they actually maximize it and get paid actually. So I guess they get to go back and get it almost time and a half. Mm-hmm. Um and I think you, when you think about the football teams, you're able to really find, you have a clear path on how you get to where you need to get to. There's, you know, you're not ha- having any prejudice or like, oh, well, this is a blue blood. You're not a blue blood. Um, because I think when you work your way up, you will get the fan f- fanfare. You will get the, the national uh, media attention to where when you arrive at a college, fo- when you get in that top 40, you're making some noise. And it's also making the teams that are at the top make better decisions and not be able to go and Debo people based on like Texas A&M spend all that money in that mm-hmm. in, a, in supposedly an NIL and had what out of the top five, like or top six defensive linemen. They had four of them, you yeah. know, that year they had mm-hmm. that crazy. Right. Mm-hmm. So then it's allowing you to be more prudent when you, when you are more, you know, fiscally sound when you build your team, build your whole structure, you're going to have to put more money into your scouting department and your, like administration, building a team. So now this is like a professional team, but then also it allows you to get a little bit of a break on, you know, sometimes overpaying and, and, and players under, under deliver. I like that. I also like the idea of the buyout. So let's say a player wants to leave, jump in the portal. Would it be one for one they pay it back or would it be like 1.2 times their salary cap? De- number depends, they pay on, back? D- depends on how long they're into the university. Okay. Right. And how so, like one point five per one point five times as a if freshman, one point right. four as a yeah. sophomore, one point three, and, and then one as a senior grad and, transfer. And, and I think after like year two or three, it drastically drops because okay. you want to be able to give the coaches time. If you're going, if I'm putting more pressure on the coaches to win, I'm putting. I want to put as much pressure on the players being able to be coached. Now, well, granted, part of winning is player identification and, and development. development. Right. Give them more time. Now, look. There's always a outlier to all the rules and there's going to be family situations there's going to be a change in coaching philosophy there's going to be a guy guys that are going to be then you might be more willing say you want to go from the top league down to league three but you can still work your way back up and there's got to be contract you know uh, stipulations based on how far you drop and so Mm -hmm. then that way if you do drop down to let's just say like james madison wouldn't excuse me be in like section three, but just say they're a team like James Madison is down there. Say like a, I can't even put South Dakota state, but just say a team down in, in three. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. You're dropping down there, but then the player and the team can find a way back up a clear mm-hmm. path. So, okay, well, we got to get better here. So do you know what? We got to maybe, you know, really up our scout. We got to start looking at this player that's in his third or fourth year, not getting a lot of time. And then also, you know, Okay, well, look, you know, you, you know, you're not going to Clemson, right? Because you can't, you, you, have, you don't have the playing experience or the or the stats to go to Clemson. Well, you know what? James Madison looks a lot better, and you got three years of eligibility left. So now it's, it, you know, you, you also so say like you have a kid that at that level three, going up to level one. Guess where it's beneficial for both teams? So have a certain number of say I want Austin from that number three to come up to. Like they do in basketball, you go get mm-hmm. them from like a North Dakota state to Alabama. Well, you pay like a transfer fee or whatever. I like say like in European soccer to the team that here, and then you then you get the player usable on this year's salary cap or next year's salary cap. Well, it'd be instantaneous because okay. the season would be over, so it'd be after the season. Say okay. say I go and pluck a, a, a player off your oh, roster. Oh, gotcha, got gotcha. it. It's yes. happening for that upcoming mm-hmm. year. Season, yeah, right. Got and it. then also, it also depends on this. Do we sign? Are we only like, is the transfer fee just for a one year rental, right? And you saw this just now coming out before I came in here with Stefan Diggs. They're going to mm-hmm. let him be a free agent in 2025. So, as good as that move looked for Houston, he pulls a hammy, roll an ankle. <sighs> you stuck like Chuck Nix, uh, Cesario. You might be on your way out of Houston, right? But it might be smart if he balls out 
late franchise him or transition tag him, mm-hmm. and then you get to sign him back. But that's, you know, if it was the fifth, we'd all be drunk. Even on Thursday, Thursday here, Kevin Meyer, <laughs> Cork and Ball, we appreciate you, my brother. That's what I would do a commissioner for him. And obviously there's there's holes in this initial plan. I like the 80 teams. I like you have the ability to do it. And then also I would do this also, Austin. I would have some cost sharing that goes down to the different Division One AA, uh, Division Two, II, Division Three. Reason why we let's 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 make sure we're growing the game as a whole, right? Because if you put more money into the lower league, you might get the kid that you know develops from a Division Three. We've seen guys go for Division Three, all of a sudden hits a growth spurt, and the next thing you know, um, he's getting drafted and playing, and so. Um, that's what I, I, I like the idea. I like it that you, you know, if you're going to break off, I know you, you're trying to put yourself on a pecking or, or at a pedestal, but you also have to be able to deliver and be able to have a sustainable project. You can't keep changing it back and forth. Um, so anyways, commissioner Foreman, I don't know if that might be, that might be the quickest tenure. <laughs> right. That's a great say, hey, they say, this dude got great ideas. Poor execution. <laughs> Get him up out of here. Matter, matter of fact, we're going to execute him. You know, <laughs> that's what they'll do. Commissioner Foreman was rose to prominence, died on the same day. But anyway, that's what I think that would be great if they did it. I think it's coming sooner than later. They are telling you without telling you directly. College football is changing. The landscape is changing. If it's changing, you've got to be willing to change and adapt as well. Obviously, great Thursday. Get outside. Uh, be joyful out there. Do not get hit in the crosswalk. <laughs> People out here, I, remember that game Frogger? Oh, yeah. That, they Love playing Frogger. it right now, but they playing it in real life. <laughs> One dude, give give a shout out. If you see my man that we saw on the stream, if you see him the rest of the week, give him dap. He's made out of steel. He's the man of steel. Anyways, stay tuned. Pre-game show, Supernovas, DP, Coach uh, Renee Saunders, Old School, we're out. You're listening to Old School with DP and Jay. Download the mobile app and listen wherever you are on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Ooh, what a day. I could sure use an afternoon pick-me-up. Hold up. The new 93.7 The Ticket location has a milk coffee and tea inside? Oh, yeah. This is a game changer. Need an afternoon pick-me-up? How about a coffee or smoothie on your way to work? Stop by the Ticket Mill location on 1040 O Street to get your go-to drink or try out our new game day drinks exclusive to the Ticket Mill location. We know it'll make your day a million times better. Start your Sundays off right with Jeff and Nicole Essink on Fitness Fanatics. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, how to achieve fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners and gym goers. It's Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sundays on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Put lawn irrigation on automatic. Think Jetson Irrigation for worry-free service to Lincoln homeowners and business community. Jetson Irrigation will turn on your sprinkler system in the spring, repair or redesign as needed, and turn it off in the fall. For service to orphan sprinklers, remember Judson Irrigation. They'll never forget you. Call the Judson Irrigation Orphanage, 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. Road construction is complete, so there's nothing keeping you from getting into Mullen Motors. They